Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Leadnap Gaming. Today we're going to do a follow-up to our Arak M70B Rocket tutorial, which if you haven't seen it yet can be found here in the card. This is just a kind of addendum covering the long range attack mode and I did this on the request of subscribers and viewers like you who wanted to see this in action as well. Let's go ahead and get started. For pre-flight, your weapon selector is still going to be in attack. The sight mode selector isn't really important. In this case, though, the release mode selector, which was in series before, now should be an impulse, and the target mode selector is also irrelevant. For long-range deployment, again, long-range deployment offers a greater degree of standoff from the target, though it's generally less accurate. I do feel like it should be clarified here that the inaccuracy is related actually to the pilot and not being able to see the impact area as clearly or as closely. Basically, your reticle dot is the size of the entire impact area now, so your ability to accurately place it is really what's in question. The firing solution is still just as accurate and just as good, which makes sense if you understand how rockets work. Again, the release mode switch needs to be an impulse. You'll set your QFE on your primary altimeter. You'll disable target motion measurement, that's address block 21 value 1, and radar ranging, which is address block 25 value 3. From here, the release is the same as standard, at least as far as instrumentation goes. Your master mode will be an ANF. With a stable attitude, put the reticle on target, unsafe the trigger, and fire when the parameters are fulfilled, as in when the wings are displayed. After that, evade, safe the trigger, and return to nav. Like I said before, and it still holds true that if you understand and are good at the standard deployment, the long-range deployment is very easy and is the same. It's not going to feel the same, though, and as a result, I figured I'd throw a couple tips in here. Um, again, you still should unsafe with the reticle in the ring, but precision in this regard is not as important. Uh, and what that really means is, is as long as you unsafe in the general vicinity of the ring, the firing solution will still be good, unless, of course, you're attacking something on the side of a mountain. The best chance of a successful attack in the long-range mode is a dive, or a steep controlled descent onto the target. This isn't a, like, dive-bombing dive, so more of a shallow dive in that regard, which is why I put steep into quotes. Uh, but what I found was, if you approach it in a kind of low-level strafing style of attack, the firing solution will put the rockets short. So if you attack from a, a higher altitude down onto the target, what I found is is that you really get the best chance for success. As I mentioned previously, the HUD indicators are the same, but they don't feel the same in any way, which is, that's why I decided that I should probably go ahead and make this uh, addendum tutorial to the rocket one to cover that. Uh, the range indication, assuming you're in a dive, is less important. The, rate, the firing solution with the range envelope has a lot to do with the expected trajectory of the rockets given their propellant. So if you're coming in at a dive, gravity will continue to pull them down. So you can actually release outside the range envelope. So pay less attention to your range indication and really just work on the firing cue because the firing cue remains up for a very long period of time. So generally what I found works the best is once I've begun that dive and I get the firing cue, I line the reticle in between the wings up on the desired impact point and then I pull and hold the trigger through the release. Now again, I do clarify that this is related to in-game experience and may not reflect real-world deployment of the M70B. Now as before, like I said, the HUD indications are the same as the standard mode, but as you can see here, I've really kind of boiled it down because you don't see almost all of the different indications that come in the standard release. So up top, you can see what the hub will look like until you make the dive and then even into the dive. You still just get the target ring and the dot reticle. Once the wings appear and they, you don't get the flashing distance line to give you the heads up, the firing cue, the wings, will just appear suddenly. and that's what it's going to look like. At that point, like I said, it remains up for a long period of time, so line the reticle up with the desired impact point and pull and hold the trigger. Now, that really is all that the HUD is going to do for you, but I did put this third piece on because I noticed it happening 
uh, time and time again is even though I was at high altitude I would occasionally get the fragmentation zone warning and I think that's just related to the way that ranging works when you're not using radar ranging so as a result the system the CK-37 would get confused and tell me I was in the blast radius even though I was still high enough up that I couldn't take ground fire yet because I was out of their range. So with that said, uh, if you're receiving this warning, use your best judgment. If you're still at high altitude, you're obviously not in the fragmentation zone and don't need to peel off on your attack. Uh, if you're getting close to the ground, which the whole purpose of the long range attack is to allow you to perform this attack outside of the larger threat of ground weapons, you shouldn't be receiving this error anyways and you're probably good to ignore it. But again, use your best judgment. So with that said, let's go ahead, jump into the cockpit, and see all of this in action. Alright everybody, so now that we're in the cockpit, let's go ahead and make some adjustments. So the first thing we're going to do is turn off our radar ranging and target motion adjustments. And again, that's 221 and 253 respectively. Next, we're going to put ourselves in attack and change ourselves from series to impulse. After that, we're going to set our QFE. Now, you would get this from your kneeboard. I'd done this a bunch of times, so I already knew that it was 101.2. And then from here, we're going to pick up the action. You can see here I got the radar on to give myself an idea of where the target is ahead of time. But I'm going to go ahead and begin my approach to the target. We're already in ANF, as you can see based on the HUD. And already, notice the firing cue comes up before I've even unsafed. So I'm going to unsafe near the ring, line up my dot, pull the trigger, and then from here out I could begin to evade. Now, I'm not evading because I want to see the rocket's impact, but there you have it. And then I'll begin my evasion. You can see that I'm just starting to get the radar returns. So hopefully that helps you understand what I meant when I said the symbology is the same and everything about the attack is the same but it feels dramatically different anyways i hope that that helped let me know if you have any other tips down in the comments below i do have the impact video following this which is a little different how i've normally done it but i did it a little more artistically to make it a little more entertaining for you guys but you can see how accurate that attack really was again if you have any questions let me know down below don't forget to hit subscribe and i will catch you all next time